Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to understand the different autoimmune blistering diseases. There are two main ones, pemphigus vulgaris and bullis pemphigoid. They can be a little confusing, but I'm sure you'll master it by the end of this video. To make sure we've understood the contents of this video in and out, I'll discuss questions so that you get a rough idea of how concepts are tested. Let's begin. Blister is basically a lesion which has fluid filled in it. Blisters which are less than 1 cm in size are called vesicles. Vesicles are majorly seen in herpes. A blister which is greater than 1 cm is called a bulla. Examples of bulla are pemphigus vulgaris and bullus pemphigoid. Before jumping into the pathology, let's take a look at the layers of the skin. The yellow one here represents the epidermis and the red layer represents the dermis. There are different junctions which connect one cell to another in all these layers. Cells in the epidermis are connected to each other by desmosomes. Cells in the basal layer adhere to the basement membrane via the hemidesmosome. Simply put, epidermal cells are connected to each other by desmosomes and epidermal cells are connected to the basement membrane via hemidesmosomes. A trick to remember this is by thinking of the alphabets. If I write down the alphabets like this, D comes on top of H, so desmosomes are on top and hemidesmosomes are below. In Pemphigus vulgaris, there are antibodies present against the desmosomes. So, the connection between two epidermal cells will be lost. In such cases, epidermal cells get separated. In Bullis pemphigoid, there are antibodies to the hemidesmosome. So, there will be a separation out here. So, antibodies against hemidesmosomes are seen in bullous pemphigoid. Question number 2. Pemphigus vulgaris is an example of type dash hypersensitivity. Option A, type 1. Option B, type 2. Option C, type 3. Option D, none of the above. Since these two conditions involve antibodies against a particular component of the skin, they are examples of type 2 hypersensitivity. Note that skin lesions from type 3 hypersensitivity are usually characterized by erythema and a maculopapular rash. Type 1 hypersensitivity involves IgE. This is majorly seen in diseases like allergic asthma. If you want to know more about type 1 hypersensitivity, do check this video out on the drugs used in managing asthma. Question number 3. Flaccid blisters are usually seen in Option A. Pemphigus vulgaris Option B. Bullis pemphigoid Bullis pemphigoid has a defect in this layer. However, we still have all these layers on top of it which are pretty intact. So, it is very hard for the blister to rupture in this case. But in Pemphigus vulgaris, the superficial layers are involved. So, there is a very thin wall to this blister. This results in a blister which is very easy to rupture. So, the answer to this question is Pemphigus vulgaris. Question number 4. A positive Nikolsky sign is seen in Option A, Pemphigus vulgaris. Option B, Bullis pemphigoid. Nikolsky sign is considered positive if a gentle shearing force on the skin like this results in the detachment of the upper skin layer. In Pemphigus vulgaris, the epidermal cells aren't attached properly to each other. So, even a gentle force on the skin is sufficient for these layers to shed off. Hence, Nikolsky sign is positive in Pemphigus vulgaris. This is the reason why Pemphigus vulgaris can be a medical emergency. Since Bullis pemphigoid has all these layers protecting it, Nikolsky sign is generally negative. Question number 5. Oral mucosa is involved in 
Option A, Pemphigus vulgaris. Option B, Bullus pemphigoid. Option C, none of the above. The answer to this question is Pemphigus vulgaris. Recall that Pemphigus vulgaris has antibodies against desmosomes. Desmosomes are present in the oral mucosa as well. So, antibodies will go attack them there too. The oral mucosa is spared in Bullus pemphigoid. As promised, there is an extra question out here. Question number 6. Linear immunofluorescence is seen in Option A. Pemphigus vulgaris Option B. Bullus pemphigoid In Pemphigus vulgaris, the affected cells are all over the place. So, immune fluorescence will show a reticular net-like pattern which looks something like this. In bullous pemphigoid, the affected cells are confined to this area. So, immune fluorescence will be linear. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My fifth year exams ended yesterday. I'm going to make a video on how to approach exams, deal with stress, manage time and answer all your questions on this topic. If you have a pressing question you want me to answer, comment below. If you want to get to know me better, follow me on Instagram. I also post my quizzes and shares of my daily life there. Thank you for watching.